Deceivers want to see their blind spots and they want to see, help others to see theirs also. I know a few people, I've met a few people down through the years that are readily see deficiencies in other people but not necessarily themselves. You work with one, don't you? <laughs> Talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> you hear they turned off tonight. Oh, she got her back turned. She don't know what she's doing. <laughs> Help us, Jesus, to be so good. Hey, Just like <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Help us to be humble. That's that judgmental. That's that judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was thinking I was a perceiver. No. <laughs> That's not what Brother Baby said. A deceiver? A deceiver. <laughs> okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't no achiever. <laughs> Perceivers are insightful. Occasionally, they will have visions and and revelations. And we'll say this about perceivers that they only see in black and white. You know, their 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 idea is is saved, lost, heaven, hell. I mean, to them, you know, that they they've never been able to make a line between those two, you know. They they see no gray area. They are promoters of spiritual growth in individuals and in groups. Perceivers are, are they uh, they are multi-purpose in that they're good in one-on-one -on -one situation, they're also good in in, in, in group situations. Perceivers have strong convictions and a desire to be obedient to God at all costs. Now, as we work our way through here, we're going to mention some weaknesses, but we focus on try to highlight the positives. But I, I do want to say one thing here about uh, perceivers. Sometimes they see things that are not in the will of God. Okay? Now, this is where a perceiver really needs to be disciplined. Uh, when I say disciplined, under, <clears throat> they need to be under the discipline of the Spirit. <clears throat> because, what did we say a while ago? Technically, at their best, they're called to be intercessors. But if they refuse to uh, cultivate that gift, that sensitivity is still there. So they may see something in the church and, and they know that it's not in the spirit. And so instead of praying about it, they may have a tendency to, to jump in and try to fix the situation and wind up making a mess out of the whole thing. Paul wrote an interesting verse in, uh, uh, to, to, die, to Titus when he talked about a group of people in the church, and this is what he said, he said they learned to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but they have become tattlers also and busybodies. Busy bodies. And, and I got to looking at that one day, and, and this is just a fault. Uh, this particular uh, piece of information on a dollar bill will probably get you a cup of coffee down to walk away. But I got to looking at that scripture. We got to thinking about that. Uh, this group of people, they had learned to be idle. There's the first danger in the church right there, being idle. Then they began wandering from house to house. And not only were they idle and wandering from house to house, but now they've become tattlers and busybodies. I believe, I believe that these probably, these people that Paul was talking about, they were probably perceivers. They were probably perceivers who had seen a situation and instead of praying, they had turned into gossips from house to house. 
And instead of interceding, they had become busybodies. And instead of talking to the Lord, they had become sowers of discord among the brethren. It's just a thought. Receivers don't need cell phones. <laughs> Would you like to comment further on that, Brother Clark? They would be calling everybody in Tadman and causing problems. You know, telephone, tell a woman, tell, you know what? What? Tell a woman. Tell a family. Mr. Chuck, you're a woman, You haven't rubbed up on him at all. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. She started it with you all the time. Oh, what? Truth or not? I call her on my phone. You know, many times a pastor, you know, you were talking about a pastor. I mean, a receiver is, a, is an intercessor. There are a lot of times that an intercessor will see things before the pastor sees them. And their job is to birth that thing into existence. To even birth it into the pastor so that the pastor can see it. Okay, now let me. That's a good point, Brother Barry. Now you're getting off in too deep waters here, but uh, we've got a couple of minutes. We're making good time here. I want to ask you why, why, why would that be? Why, why would there be an occasion when somebody on the church pew, a perceiver on the church pew, would see something before the pastor did? Well, I mean, I, the pastor's the leader. Why, why would? And he's right. But my, I'm, what I'm, I want to share something with you here tonight, okay? Why would that be? Well, I think the most obvious reason is that the pastor himself is not a receiver. Or, or a... <clears throat> oh. or, you know, not, you know, he may not be a receiver. And, or he may be busy or... No, well, you, that, that is the answer to what you just said. Busy. Is that there are a lot of uh, pastors... That their primary uh, motivation gift may not be a perceiver. Well, the pastor may be on vacation. <laughs> well, but the intercessor, uh, you have to know what is an, an intercessor's job. You know, Paul said, I, I, I travailed until it was formed in you. Until Christ be formed in you. Until Christ be formed in you. Yeah. And, and, an, and an intercessor's job is to travail until that which God is trying to birth in the church is, is formed and is birthed. Well, that's that person's gifting. That is, right. yeah. That's what they're gifted yeah. in. They should be spending but time the, the only, interceding. The, and the danger, though, the in, my thinking, in my thinking, though, and all we're saying is good, but in my thinking, the only time that the pew would get a vision from the Lord before the pulpit did is if the pastor was not necessarily that was not necessarily his area of giftedness. I, and I know a lot of pastors, their area of giftedness is not one of my very best friends. He's one of the best perceivers I've ever I've ever rubbed shoulders with. He's 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 a hundred miles out front and he pastors a church of about a thousand. And he's way out front. He's way, he's way out front. Brother Parks, you know that you're on video, don't you? He's, <laughs> all of this is being picked up. Did you know that? Uh, he, he's, he's way out front. And he has a way of when he casts that vision. Even, even if you had never thought about it, you're sitting there and you say, I see it. I see it. But then there are other pastors that their strengths are in the area, I'm going to say, of, of serving our Compassion. This is this is this. Is, can you cut that off for just a minute? I want to say something here. 